Welcome to the worship of First Baptist Church of Los Angeles today on July 26th, this worship time. May God bless us in our time to open our hearts to him. Lord, may your face shine upon us and give us peace. May your light illumine our pathway that we may follow your grace and truth as it's revealed in scripture, but also at work in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name, to your glory, gracious God, amen. Shout to the Lord, shout to the north, shout to the south, the east, and the west, shout to the earth, all the peoples. Men of faith, rise up and sing of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak, and your brokenness complete. My comfort, my 
shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Forever I'll love you forever. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Oh, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy in the work of your hand. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in. Nothing compares to the promise I have in. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. open our hearts to God as we come in prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this day. We open our hearts to ask your blessing, not only within each of our hearts and lives and our families and our loved ones' lives, but gracious God, we pray for this world that you so love. We pray that your peace would indeed inhabit this world that so desperately needs you. Oh Lord, be with us in these days. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, may we indeed find your peace, your strength, your endurance. Gracious God, your Holy Spirit that comforts and counsels us. We pray in the midst of all these times that we would be still and know that you are God, that you are sovereign, that you are good. We also know that you are just and fair and righteous and holy. Oh, gracious God, we pray for people on our hearts and minds today for this state, this city, this nation, this world that you so love, and all the peoples of this world. We ask your healing presence. We ask for your sufficient grace and provision. Oh, gracious God, we now pray in the way that your son Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Today is the conclusion of a series of sermons on the Olivet Discourse on a series, What, would, what Did Jesus Know? Uh, looking at end times and also his admonition to the church, to humanity, to serve God, to love one another, to care for people. So we open our hearts here to this passage from this sermon that he preached on the Mount of Olives before his passion. Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, come, 
You who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothing you? When did we see you sick or in prison or, and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Open our hearts to your word, we pray, that we may not only hear your word, but apply your word and do that which you call us to do as your people. May we embrace our calling with action. Amen. What did Jesus know about end times, about judgment? We now come to the conclusion of this series from Matthew chapter 24 and 25, what's referred to as the Olivet Discourse. Jesus has said so much about things that will happen in history after his passion, after his death and resurrection and ascension. And he gives instruction, he gives teaching, he shares parables, he gives a broad brush of things that will happen in the future. But he also calls the disciples to engage, to be active in their faith. He calls also the disciples to be discerning and be careful because there will be false Christs. There will be teachers who lead people astray. There will be signs and wonders that could deceive people. There are in history examples of this. Even in our present time, we must take warning but also look ahead to the time that we will appear before God and have to give account for our lives. What kind of a person were we? Yes, having faith is the beginning of where grace comes in and God redeems and changes us, reconciles us, but there's more to this walk of faith than believing, receiving. There needs to be a response. There needs to be responsibility in the way we live as we grow into faithfulness. Now there was a modern day prophet who just went to join the Lord. His name is John Lewis. John Lewis, a civil rights pioneer who walked beside many others, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And John Lewis served in Congress and he served in many ways, but he, as a young man, dedicated his life to Christ and then also found that his dedication to God involved caring for racial understanding between people. One day on March 7th, 1965, walking at the front of the march that went over the bridge in Selma, Alabama, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, as it's now named, 
He was one of the first to be clubbed and attacked and beaten, his skull fractured. He believed in nonviolent resistance. He believed in showing and living the gospel. He believed in loving people unconditionally and believing that every person is made in the image of God. In recent years, John Lewis was understood for his heroic steps on that bridge and throughout his life. He reflected on his life and he said the thing that meant the most to him was not only knowing what to do, but to take steps to get into good trouble. <laughs> there was a time that he and a, and a white brother were on a bus and they were taken out and beaten at one of the stops along the way on this bus. Years later, an elder man came to his office and said, I am the man who beat you that day, and I want to ask you to forgive me. He had brought along uh, his grandson, and, and there John Lewis forgave him, and they hugged. That's the kind of love that brings healing. That's love in action. This is the kind of work that we're called to be about. Indeed, when did we hug our enemy? Whenever we did, we hugged Jesus. When did we feed those who are hungry? Whenever we did, we fed Jesus. When did we forgive? When we forgave, we forgave as Jesus forgave. What does it matter that Jesus shall come someday in resplendent glory? What matters, of course, is that he will come, and when he comes, it will be unmistakable. Jesus made note of this in his message from Olivet, that all people will know, and all people will have to give account, and he will separate the sheep from the goats. There are those who come in earthly ways proclaiming a glory, but only Jesus as the Son of God, as the Messiah, as the Lord has the authority to judge and his coming will be unmistakable. We look at verse 31 of chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. Now this coming that he's referring to is after the rapture that he spoke about before. But when he comes this other time, it will not be to gather up the elect as he will do someday until a time of tribulation is complete. But here he's talking about when he will come to sit upon the throne of judgment and separate hum humankind. And it says here, he will come in glory. The glory of the Lord will shine around. And the angels with him, you, you can almost begin to remember when he was born. And the glory of the angels, the heavenly hosts, shone round about the shepherds out in their fields. When Jesus comes again, all the shepherds, all the people, all the nations of the world will know that he has come. And when he comes in that time, to sit upon the throne of judgment. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The nations will be gathered before him, we see in verse 32. All the nations will gather for judgment. Throughout the Old Testament, there is this theme of how all humanity will have to appear before God. And he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. He will separate the peoples. 
He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Nothing in between. Either you're in or you're not. Either you had faith or you did not. Either you were faithful in the way you lived and operated on that principle of the grace of God and the mercy of God, but yet were humble and not only repentant, but seeking to do the will of God, seeking to know God and serve God and to love one another, following the command of God and of Jesus. Or you did not, or you went through motions without a heart that knew God. Oh, none of us are perfect. None of us really can say that we have been perfect or would deserve heaven. It is only by the grace of God. Yet those on the right, not only was their heart in the place that it needed to be, but there was some fruit. There was something they did with their lives, be it small or larger. But those on the left, they didn't respond, either in their heart or to the need. Indeed, God calls for both a heart response, a mental response, but a soul response. The soul response is what will save you. Belief, faith, action, yes, but that won't save you, but that is what comes out of faith and grace. But without faith and grace, one is separated from God. In verse 34, we read this, a declaration of favorable judgment. Then the king will say to those on the right, come, you who are blessed by my father. Hear that word, come. Come in. Be part of this new work. There's a welcome and blessing that comes from God the Father through Jesus the Lord to people who have come by faith, come by the grace of God. Take your inheritance, the kingdom. God wants us to be part of his kingdoms and to be partners with his kingdoms to understand that we have ownership in his kingdom. What a blessing. And yet, even now, what a good responsibility, purposeful, meaningful. This has been prepared for you since the creation of the world. God's plan is a redemptive plan. Even when humanity fell and sin began to have its effect, God still was working out his plan of redemption, knowing that someday he would bring to fullness this work of redemption. God prepared the way. God prepared for this moment. God keeps preparing hearts, preparing us, and we prepare the way by what we do, how we care for people in faithfulness, not only believing, but serving. Because God is working things out and God has a plan. Ever since the creation of the world, God has a plan for us to be a part of his great work. So there are some basic things here about this declaration of favorable judgment. Six things that you could say that were part of the expression of this place of belief where these who were faithful had served. First of all, they, were, they would be helping the hungry, supplying the thirsty, housing the stranger, clothing people in need, caring for the sick, visiting those in prison. These were the outward manifestations of their faith. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. 
I was in prison and you came to visit me. Do you notice that all these involve intentionality? And many times inconvenience. Faith involves perspiration. Faith involves our effort. It's not a passive thing. And grace is not a gift that's just received and then just sits there. Grace needs to be at work through our perspiration, through our service. Faith involves intentionality and belief that what we do matters. That even if we can't see, God sees. This is what it means to be partners in the kingdom of God. Now the sheep were surprised. We see in verses 37 to 39, Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, and thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Lord, when did we see you there? <laughs> they were surprised. They were just doing what they needed to do, what God had called them to do, what came from their heart and their desire to please God and serve God and care for people with the compassion and heart that God had given them. And their service for others, they discovered, was service for King Jesus. We see in verse 40, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. You did this for me. We need to see that in the midst of our daily life, whatever we do can be in service to Christ as we serve others. I, I think of many times when people are put in my life and in your life, and we don't see Jesus right away, but sometimes we have a glimpse that all of a sudden we realize that Jesus is in our midst as we're caring. We had this man who came to our church in Battle Creek, Michigan, and he had been in a war situation in the Sudan from Africa, and he had only one leg. And so he came and was looking for help. And there are a lot of ways we were helping him, but I remember one time we went to the local Salvation Army to get him a, a coat, a new winter coat. We went and yes, there were the you know, standard polyester, nylon, warm coats, but there was a beautiful leather coat, nicely insulated and beautiful brown leather coat. And when he saw that, his eyes lit up. And I thought, I have to get him that coat. It's gonna cost more, but you know, this, is a time to show love and encouragement. And so he showed up at our Thanksgiving. We, we, I picked him up for our Thanksgiving meal. And he was all nicely dressed with a nice sweater and, and wearing that wonderful coat. And more importantly, he was wearing a wonderful smile. There are little ways we can help others and clothe them and feed or visit, being present so many things we can do. The key is to listen and discover and discern where Jesus is in our neighborhoods, in our contacts, in our going forth. And yes, even during the coronavirus pandemic, we can find creative ways to listen and care. But what about the goats? The goats are banished. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed. The curse had begun before this moment. They had already chosen a life that was distant, alienated from God, and really broken from the kind of life and integrity and care and compassion that they were meant to have in their life and within society, within humanity. We are meant for community, and when we choose selfish gain over the care of 
the community, when we choose our own way instead of God's way, when we don't listen to God's spirit and discover the presence of God in our midst, we miss something and we die each time we deny God and Jesus in our life, in our midst, in the opportunities to serve. We die a little bit each time. And these goats had become distant, spiritually dead. Oh, they were alive, yes, and kicking. But they were dead spiritually. They had chosen this curse of sin and its consequence throughout their lives. And he says, depart from me, you who are cursed. You are a dead because of sin. Into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. This banishment, this curse involves a second death of the soul. God does not make people have a relationship with him. That's up to each person to choose. And also God does not make us serve one another. That's for each of us to choose. Jesus shows us the way, but we, are, we have to have faith to trust in God and follow in that way. This eternal fire was prepared not only for those who were banished, but for the devil and his angels. God, in his righteous holiness, has a plan that involves ultimate judgment for evil and for those who have not become alive spiritually. God is righteous and holy, and his preparation for a new heaven and a new earth involve a cleansing, a judgment. These are tough words. But only Jesus is in this position as Lord to separate the sheep from the goats. Only our Heavenly Father has given him this authority. And this day will come. So what were some of the things about the uh, goats, well, they didn't feed the hungry. They didn't offer drink to the thirsty. They didn't invite the stranger in. They didn't clothe the naked. They didn't care for the sick or in prison. In other words, their hearts were not moved either to care for their fellow man or to be stirred within by the Holy Spirit to be open to God and his leading and his presence even in community. They were surprised, the goats were, verse 44, they answered, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? Je Jesus, if, if, it, if we knew it was you, we would have helped you. Ultimately, it comes down to faith and obedience. Openness, willingness, and action. Faith without works is dead, James said. And Jesus doesn't tell us in this passage that each one had to recite just the right words before him. What mattered is, did they have a right heart that led to service, that led them to a heart that he would give them a new heart? There were those with the new heart of flesh and those with the old heart of stone. That's the difference. If you have a new heart because of the grace of God, it changes the way you live. And even a person with a heart of stone, if they would allow their heart to be broken by the love of God, they can have new, newness of life. The seed can begin to sprout. There's still hope. The window's still open. God can still work if you're willing, if you re repent and you believe and say, God, help me, forgive me. Help me to love as you've loved me. And when you are loved within, it will change you so that you will love in the way you live and care for those around you. He says to the goats, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. 
They miss the opportunity of faith and service, of seeing, serving, and knowing Jesus in their daily life, of knowing God in their daily life. There will be a final judgment, and here's what Jesus says about this. Verse 45, then they will go away to eternal punishment, those on the left, but the righteous to eternal life. So what will it be? Where are you? None of us are saved by our good works, only by grace. And yet when grace begins to have its way within us, it will change the way we live. It will change the way we think. It will change the way we perceive people around us and then begin to discern that God is calling us to do things. We are challenged through this passage, just as Jesus' disciples were challenged then, that we should do something and not just sit back. How is this vision and teaching of Jesus relevant to today? Three things. God desires to know all people, and we have the freedom to believe or not to believe. Two is we are to serve others as disciples of Jesus, discovering Jesus in, in the way that we serve and in who we serve and in the places we serve, be it easy or hard. We need to discover Jesus in our serving. And three, God will judge all people. Judgment is based on our faith and our service. May we have faith that is alive. Faith to see Jesus in the everyday relationships. Faith to look at life and community and people in a new way to see that in our midst, Jesus is there, God is there, God's Spirit is calling us to serve. This is the preparation for the kingdom of heaven. This is the way that we are ready to meet our Maker, Redeemer, Judge, and Savior. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, have your way in our lives. Lord, if there's someone who wants to give their heart to you anew and wants to rededicate themselves in serving you, Lord Jesus, in everyday living, may it be that in this time they give their life to you and their dedication and commitment. Oh, gracious God, work in our lives, work in our communities. We pray for the work of your Holy Spirit in these days and that we together may serve you until you come and see you in all relationships. Oh, gracious God, lead us, we pray. Help us serve you well. Amen. May God bless you.